let's get into our first leg of discussion. Now, let's tell you a little story. Mm -hmm. Now, as Mao was down with fever, and apparently she was bitten by a mosquito and, was, and, and she wasn't treated on time. Now, she succumbed to her sickness and she died from malaria. Now, her death comes, uh, her death could have been prevented, and she could have been treated and cured. But that's well. the grim reality today, especially for Nigeria that carries the world's greatest burden of malaria. Yes, indeed. And it's World Malaria Day today, and that's why we need to bring uh, such stories uh, to you. And as Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the World Malaria Day today, uh, stakeholders are calling for more efforts in net distributions, improvement in sanitation and hygiene, as well as a lot more advancements in anti-malaria drugs. Now, to bridge the gap, Nigeria has now committed itself to improving uh, funding for the disease by securing a $300 million uh, from the World Bank, Islamic Development Bank, and African Development Bank to help finance its national uh, malaria strategy. Is Nigeria ready to beat malaria? Nigeria suffers the world's greatest malaria burden with about 51 million cases and more than 200,000 deaths reported yearly. This means that the country accounts for about 30% of the total malaria burden in Africa, which puts about 97% of the population at risk of new infections. The World Malaria Day is an annual event that seeks to create awareness about how to cut down on these numbers. Discussions this time around is on the newly developed anti-malaria vaccine, which could potentially reduce the malaria burden in countries like India and others in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, the pilot countries are Kenya, Ghana and Malawi. And uh, these countries were selected after because they met the set criteria for the vaccine introduction. They, first of all, the vaccines were, uh, during the trial, the candidate um, trial, these countries were also one of the countries that participated in the trial of the vaccine. Nigeria can achieve significant milestones with this vaccine should the trials be successful. One key thing I would like to highlight is that uh, while the vaccine is a welcome innovation, the global community is excited about the vaccine, we must be able to manage expectations. The vaccine is not a magic wand to malaria control. The vaccine should and ought to be used in combination, I mean, when it's made commercially av um, available based on the results of the pilot. Other stakeholders in the malaria fight are here at the Mogadishu cantonment in Abuja to play their part in educating both military personnel and civilians about the disease. The people need to be aware and they must keep their environment clean. Because without a clean environment, you give room to the vector. And what is the vector? The mosquito. Once you give room for a mosquito to breed, if there is one person with malaria, the mosquito will bite the person and continue biting other people. That is the way we transmit malaria. So the first is to prevent the breeding of mosquito. We must eliminate mosquito. Without the elimination of mosquito, we cannot eliminate malaria. We are covering all the rural areas as far as disease prevention treatment is concerned. And I did mention at the beginning, too, that the chief of defense staff and the service chiefs have done a lot of upgrade of our health facilities. The fight against malaria in Nigeria is hampered by various factors, including rapid population growth, the lack of proper sanitation, and public sensitization. I believe it's a lack of knowledge, attitude, um, environmental factors that prevent people from practicing appropriate, um, what I say, preventive and treatment behaviors. Experts say Nigeria has all it takes to beat malaria if there is the political will and the preparedness to try other life-changing interventions. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja. All right, uh, we have joining us from our Abuja studio, uh, Dr. Nenna Obulafo. She is head uh, Case Management National Malaria Elimination Program uh, right there in our Abuja studio. Good morning and thanks for joining us. 
Good morning, Gose. How are you doing? Very well, thank morning. you. And I, I wonder if it will make sense to say Happy Malaria Day. <laughs> uh, it can only be happy if we're able to draw enough attention uh, to uh, Nigerians everywhere, both in the rural and, of course, in the cities. Now, it seems Nigeria... Uh, over the years has not been committed enough to the fight against malaria, especially when it comes to the issue of the funding gap. Uh, what exactly is wrong that we've not been able to show or demonstrate seriousness when it comes to fighting malaria? Thank you very much. Yeah, um... Because uh, I really don't um, agree with you. Mm. Um, we have, um, as a country, um, been very consistent in our fight um, on malaria. Um, we have um, been trying our best in as much as uh, we have um, a lot of funding challenges. Um, you know, um, Nigeria, um, together with uh, the Global Fund for AIDS and um, TB and malaria mm. um, has been, um, Nigeria from our part we've been um, trying as much as possible despite our uh, economic uh, crisis, we've been trying as much as possible to do our counterpart funding um, uh, to that of Global Fund. And uh, even at that, like three days ago, we had um, um, the World Bank uh, and African Development Bank and the Islamic Bank um, um, agreeing to 300, about 300 million uh, for the fight of malaria. These are all moves from uh, the federal government of Nigeria. So um, I wouldn't say um, that uh, we haven't been doing um, much uh, on malaria. But the you figures, know, and, um, the figures uh, coming uh, down to the program. The figures seem to put out the contrary. I mean, when you, when we hear that uh, there's a 76 percent funding gap in atomicinin uh, combination therapy, 86 percent uh, gap in rapid diagnostic test kits, and all of that, the figures just pile up. Uh, and you say we're doing good enough is what we're doing really good enough in terms of fighting yeah, malaria we, we, that's what i'm saying mm. that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying because you know um it's not only malaria that uh, we have as issues health issues in nigeria but then um, um uh, that's why we have gone ahead you know to try to see if we can um, um, um get some um loans from um the World Bank, which uh, by, um, I mean, we're succeeding. And um, with that, it would uh, go a long way, you know, to cover all the gaps that we have, significant gaps that mm. we have, okay. you know, in the fight of malaria, you know. All right. Uh, in terms of the program, because I tell you, we're doing a whole lot. And mm. All right. The, talk to us about the figures. The, the bond is, the, we, the malaria prevalence is still quite high in many mm. parts of uh, the country and from from some of the figures we have here malaria is still a risk to uh, over over about 70% mm -hmm. of Nigeria's population and that's that's really high if you really put the numbers uh, side by side with uh, what's going on in other countries Nigeria is about taking uh, or seeking to take loan from the World Bank Islamic Bank and the Africa Development Bank this is not the first time there's a, there, there, there tends to be a deliberate effort to fight malaria. But what's going to be different between this now and what, has had, what they've done before and loans they've taken from partners or foreign partners and banks before? Yeah, um, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Um, basically, um, we have, um, in the past couple of years, according to WHO, um, um, uh, policy which Nigeria has uh, fully adopted, the testing, you know, the um, um, diagnostic testing for um, malaria suspected cases, you know, it's um, uh, what uh, it's a very good intervention that we're doing um, so far, and we're kind of appealing to health workers to uh, please um, uh, take it serious because. Um, we know also that the burden from our statistics, mm. um, according to our um, 
um, National Malaria Indicator Survey, um, done 2010. Um, the, we had 42% um, um, prevalence of malaria. That of 2015 showed 27%. You know, that is significant. Well, I'll say significant. I still, I know that we still have a lot of work, you know, to be done. But then that is significant enough. And um, to help push that down, we're, we're kind of um, um, also telling, um, appealing to the health workers that, and also to the care seekers, that um, they should insist on testing um, of all fevers or suspected malaria cases, mm. you know, because malaria, in as much as it still it remains a public health, uh, uh, a major public health problem in Nigeria and in the African region at large, um, we're, we're appealing that they should test, you know, we uh, do a parasitological test to confirm that this fever is a, as a result of uh, malaria. Yeah, you just so raised that. Part uh, of um, um, where, um, one of the interventions. You, you just raised uh, the issue That's of... That's one of um, the major interventions. Yes. That you just raised the issue of um, uh, self-management <laughs> now, uh, self-medication, as it were. Every, every headache, every fever is interpreted as, or diagnosed, self-diagnosed as malaria. And then the next thing you hear, uh, I don't go pharmacy, I don't go chemist, you know, that kind of thing. Um, what are you doing really to educate uh, right. Nigerians on the need to ensure that they have the right me uh, um, diagnosis before uh, treating malaria? Because now we hear that WHO is coming up with this triple uh, combination therapy. Yes. Yes, I, pr presently we have, um, we have, um, presently we have the, um, um, artisanin um, combined therapy, mm. uh, which is what we use. That is the effective tr um, tr uh, treatment, the effective medicine for the treatment of malaria. Um, um, we're also appealing to the public that um, the issue of monotherapies um, should be, apart from the public, we're also talking to the health professionals, also the patent medicine um, dealers where you know you, you, you can quite agree with me that especially for the cases of su su suspected malaria, um, um, a lot of them tend to patronize uh, more of the pharmacies. So at the program level, um, we're not um, leaving that off. Um, we're also, as we're talking to the health uh, facilities, we're also um, talking to the, um, doing interventions with the patent uh, medicine dealers, you know, teaching them and encouraging them to test we have the rapid diagnostic test kits, which can give you the, your result um, under 15, 20 minutes, mm. you know, to say, really, this is malaria. And then when that is confirmed, we're also like um, appealing that people should, uh, the pharmacists, the health professionals should not do monotherapy treatment. The effective uh, treatment for malaria remains uh, um, the ACTs, that's the at atomicinin, uh, based combined uh, therapy, which would uh, target uh, the parasite um, from um, two angles, um, um, uh, thereby uh, uh, giving us a total elimination and also preventing resistance. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to us about the issue of uh, the disturbing issue of drug resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people take drugs that are meant for malaria these days, but they, they complain, some of them complain they're not feeling better and all of that. How, how, how challenging is that to the fight against malaria right now? Yes, Mike, that's what we're saying, that you should test. We really want, we're really appealing to the health workers, to even um, um, health seekers to, you know, have that... Um, um, that um, um, uh, um, um, thing in them to test for malaria before they start to treat because it's not all fevers that is malaria. So in a situation where you have a fever and you didn't test to confirm that this is malaria and you go ahead and start taking your ACTs, um, if it's not malaria, I tell you, Mike, um, um, that um, medicine is not going, going to work. And that is the case, you know, for most um, care seekers. So when they go ahead and uh, take their um, ACTs blindly without testing, 
the drugs would not work because it's actually not malaria that you have and you're using a malaria drug to, hmm. to you know, a malaria medicine, you know, to, to try to treat your fever. So you're not going to get um, um, uh, well, you know, it's not going to get better. And so the next thing is that a lot of them are like uh, shouting that they're having resistance, it's not working and all that. So that's why we're like appealing to everybody, you know, can we go through this route, which is the WHO approved, you know, and it is um, evidence based you know, that um, the, the RDT is actually working. And also, you know, uh, of course, we know that the gold standard for the uh, uh, parastological diagnosis of malaria remains the microscopy, you know. Mm. But on the sideline, we have the RDTs, which are very sensitive and can, you know, really they, pick it up when it is well, But uh, Dr. Molafo, yeah. we still have the case of uh, fake drugs that mm -hmm. uh, people often complain and talk about. So the issue of um, self-medication, like uh, Ngozi was raising earlier, is, is part of it, which is part of what you just explained now too. But the issue of fake drugs, we, we, we sometimes find some of the so-called malaria drugs, even on buses, people yeah. hawk them around and all of that. So, so how, how do we explain that? Okay, the issue of fake drug, it's um, across, you know, every um, disease, um, medicines or so. It's not only malaria, but I know that with NAVDAC, we're also doing a lot to uh, look into this. Um, there's this uh, issue of true scan, where, you know, for the malaria medicines, um, 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 there's a, um, there's a, you, ha you kind of scratch and um, send uh, a text to that number and it says it's fake and all that or mm. it's not, don't take it or go ahead and take it. So we have all developed that for our anti-malarials. So we are also appealing to the public that these things are effective, they are working. So you, you, when you uh, get your medications, um, um, your medicines, you, um, if you, uh, you, you try to apply that, if you know, scratch and send that text to, um, um, to NAVDAC, you always get an immediate response to say this is fake. But that of, uh, the, the issue of fake drugs is something that it's um, um, one of the issues that we're dealing with in, in Nigeria and it's not uh, only related to malaria. Mm, yes, indeed. Yeah. I wonder how many uh, Nigerians really do have the patience to uh, scratch those, uh, you know, medicines the to, numbers and to sent confirm to from NAFDAQ. But a lot of people are doing that. Oh, a lot of people, That's yeah. good to know. Come across a lot of people I have to who, confess, I've never, yes. never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm, I'm enlightened, yeah. I'm educated. Okay, now let, let's um, uh, even look at most of the monies, the funds coming from... Uh, you know, bodies like Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation, the WHO, and of course Nigeria's commitment to fight malaria with, with some funds that it has thrown in. Is, does it include uh, research in terms of looking for alternative ways from within, talking about alternative medicine in Nigeria, uh, to actually tackle this, because the WHO agrees that new and innovative solutions need to be developed. Is that where alternative medicine comes in? Well, um, I don't know about I don't know about alternative medicine, but I know in terms of research, um, you know, also uh, presently uh, worldwide, we're also seeing some parts of. Um, um, the globe talking mm. about resistance yeah. to the ACTs and you know in Nigeria the ACTs um, um, atemetalumefantrine and uh, atisunate um, um, amodoquine remains our first line for the treatment of un uncomplicated malaria mm. um, um, where we're having uh, where, where we know that we're having issues from the Asian countries of resistance to these drugs and Nigeria it's not um, we're not just sitting, you know, so we're, we're putting in a lot of money in research. Um, we, we, we do um, um, what we call drug therapeutic efficacy studies. These studies is what um, we kind of put a, a tab on to make sure that uh, our drugs, um, our uh, policy on drug treatment for malaria remains very efficacious. So this um, um, uh, studies have been going on. We started way back in uh, 1998, 
1998, I think. Um, and since then, we, we've been in as much as sometimes because of funds, it could be, um, um, we could do it like a, uh, between two to three years. But then um, lately, the last was done 2014, 2015. And um, the results came out that our anti-malarias are still very efficacious um, uh, and very sensitive to, to the treatment of the parasite, malaria parasite. Okay. And um, um, lately, we even we just had a meeting two weeks ago, stakeholders meeting two weeks ago, um, um, in the preparation to 2018. Uh, drug therapeutic efficacy test. So Nigeria is on, on top of it. We're doing a whole lot on research to make sure that um, 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 we beat malaria. Okay. Just like the team of the CSCs. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are aware that there are, there are research have uh, been able to bring out the issue of vaccines in some parts of the world. Now, I wonder how Nigeria is going to um, benefit from researches like that. We know that uh, HIV has really come, the rate of HIV prevalence has come down now because of the antiretrovirals and, uh, and so on. When it comes to vaccines against malaria, how readily available would that be in Nigeria for Nigerians? Um, yeah, um, just like we do other programs, the government would try to subsidize when WHO goes ahead to say this is finally done. I know that the vaccines, the issue of the vaccines is still in the clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And so when once um, it's ready to be deployed, uh, WHO will guide on that. And then, of course, Nigeria, as we have always done, we would try to, as a country, to subsidize that, especially now that um, our statistics is saying that malaria is more of a rural uh, mm. more, more of a rural uh, uh, disease than urban. So Nigerian government, I know, would try to also subsidize to the uh, uh, um, uh, vulnerable group, which remains under five, and the pregnant women. Absolutely, and but I was just going to, you put it right, for WHO yes, you put it right in my mouth as to, you know, uh, malaria in pregnancy and, of course, mm -hmm. under fives. Now, how effective are the tools, you know, in fighting malaria, uh, the mosquito net, for example, uh, sprays and treatment? Uh, tell us about that and how, how effective it, it is. Yeah. It's, it's really very effective, you know. So what we're trying to, part of what we're trying to do is to get the compliance from our care seekers. Um, the, um, um, from our statistics, you know, if um, the pregnant women would um, um, sleep under an, a long-lasting incestidal treated net um, in the night, um, and the children, it's, um, I mean, we, we can as much as possible um, eliminate, eliminate um, um, that, the, the, the infection in them. So that is why we're stressing on that. Apart from that too, for the pregnant women, we're doing um, the intermittent uh, preventive treatment for pregnant women, where we're using uh, sulfodexin parametamine mm. um, to, to, as a prophylaxis for them um, uh, when they come for ANC. And usually we start this um, um, from the second trimester, um, that's about 16 weeks um, of uh, pregnancy. Um, we start to give them the SP, uh, mm -hmm. sulfonaxine, parametamine, the SP drugs. Uh, and then we, WHO, um, you know, we have adopted uh, the WHO um, guideline on that, which, which says a pregnant woman should get that uh, at least um, three doses or more before she puts to bed, you know, for prophylaxis. So we, we, the, if, 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 if um, our pregnant women stick to this, um, it's, they, are, they, are, they, they, they should be free of malaria and have healthy children mm -hmm. while um, with that pregnancy. Also, with the under five children, um, um, along the axis of the Sahel region, that is um, the Adamawa Yobe um, 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 Boronu axis, we're yeah. also doing the seasonal malaria chemoprophylaxis with uh, 
the SPs of uh, Daxin paramectamine and the amodoquin combination. Mm. Mm. All right. Ah, okay. And it starts, starts to administer well, them. Yes. The, the, well, those when you names hear those names, those names can be scary <laughs> sometimes. But it's fine. The, the point there is we, we've seen very <laughs> deliberate and concerted effort against uh, the disease like polio, where it has been almost eradicated in Nigeria. Is there any target as to how many years from now Nigeria, all the agencies and partners are working to, to eliminate malaria from the country. Is there any target or set goal like that? Yes. Yes, Mike. Um, we have um, our um, national strategic plan, which speaks to that. Um, um, basically, our um, mission is uh, a malaria-free Nigeria and um, definite that uh, very soon we're going to uh, meet that. So our strategic plan um, says that we should get to the pre-elimination stage um, by 20, 2020 and then um, where we'll have um, um, zero deaths uh, from malaria, you know. So and our, um, our strategic plan uh, is basically on our intervention is based, this, is, this will be achieved from our um, robust interventions, which includes, of course, prevention, the preventive mm. um, aspect with uh, um, um, long-lasting suicidal nets and uh, some other preventive uh, measures that I have um, touched on this program, uh, like the intermittent uh, preventive uh, therapy for the pregnant women and the under five, and um, also um, the testing and um, uh, effective drug uh, um, treatment mm. with malaria. So yes, we have a target by 2020 to reach to the pre-elimination stage. Okay, uh, well, that's interesting to know. 2020 is just right around the yeah, corner. Yeah, it's about two, uh, two years away. Yeah, uh, well, finally, in the report we played before uh, we brought you on, there was a question of uh, the possibility of actually eliminating the vector itself, the uh, Anopheles mosquito. Uh, you know, that causes malaria. Is that possible even in these regions? Because I know in parts of, in many parts of the U.S., uh, Florida and the rest of them, they especially uh, areas where they have the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, climatic conditions like we have here. The mosquito has been eliminated. Is that a possibility here in Nigeria? Yes, um, it, it will be possible um, to eliminate the parasites, both in the mosquito um, um, we may not um, uh, totally eliminate the mosquito, but the issue is to have a mosquito that is not carrying the parasite um, in, in it. You know, so that is why um, um, we're stressing on the, um, um, our preventive measures, which remain sleep with the mosquito net, mm. uh, sleep under the mosquito net, so that because you know that part of the um, the parasite uh, cycle is completed in the mosquito. So, you, you know, we target it from two angles. So um, we try to um, use the drugs to get um, the uh, patient free from the parasite so that even when the mosquito bites you, you know, because in the process of the mosquito bite, it takes um, from the human that is infected mm. um, what we call gametocytes. Um, and that's also part of the mosquito cycle. And that um, the, the, the adult, uh, um, the male and female gametocytes is completed in the stomach of the mosquito. So when we are um, strong on our treatment, you know, our angle with effective drugs and the right drugs, mm. then we can have um, a lot of the population that, that is free of the parasite. And so even when the mosquito bites you, um, it's not going to you know, be infected with those okay. gametocytes. All right. So that's one angle. Uh, and then okay. we're looking at the environmental angle now uh -huh. where... Yes. Yeah, we, we have to leave you here now. <laughs> uh, there's so much to talk about on, uh, on, on a day like this. Yeah. Dr. Nena Wula for Head Case Management at the National Malaria Elimination Program. Thank you for talking to TVC Breakfast.